Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Myguron Flix. It's important, I think, to point out that it's listed as AM8 Knives. I don't know if this is a subsidiary of Myguron or if it's a it was a separate company that got bought out by my, I have no idea. But this is the information that's in, that that uh, sort of comes with it, AM8. And then if you look this up, it's listed uh, as Myguron. It doesn't surprise me, and I'll talk about that uh, later in the video. You can find listings of this knife on White Mountain Knives and a couple of other places. I don't know if it's available right now. I will link it down below if I can. This is a really interesting knife. I want to thank uh, at Tattooed Cameraman on Instagram for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure and give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thanks for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Uh, definitely a full-size knife, which is something that I like. Uh, overall length is coming in at, it's about eight and a half, maybe just a hair, 8.4 inches overall. Um, cutting edge, I'm sorry, blade length is coming in about 3.6, and then your cutting edge is coming in at about three and a half inches. Pretty good ratios, I like that. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? This is a, a very close to exactly the same size uh, as the Rat 1, um, but quite a bit more ergonomically comfortable, which we'll talk about. Just a couple more. I don't think we need to do a ton of size comparisons today. Uh, the pair of three, mm, there you go. And finally, the Benchmade Bug Out. So yeah, full size knife for sure. Uh, how about that action? So here's the lock bar disengagement. Uh, and then it takes just a couple of wiggles. Really nice, actually. It is a front flipper slash reverse flick thing. You can, it works. Um, I really wish that it did have a different, an, another deployment method, right? Like thumb studs or something like that. We'll talk about that more. But the action is quality as far as like the detent strength, the tuning of the detent for this type, these types of deployment mechanisms. <laughs> Uh, and then the um, this, the action on the inside of the pivot is nice and smooth. Uh, so yeah, uh, very good. Let's go ahead and do thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, uh, it is contoured, just a little bit thicker than the Para 3, but it is contoured, which is nice. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? You can see here um, that it's really just a big, long rectangle, a smooth rectangle. So longer than the Para 3, a little bit, little tiny bit shorter than the PM2, nowhere near as tall as either because it's a front flipper. Uh, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in my description in the section that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Pretty sure this is gonna be a T8 and T6 combo knife, yes. Uh, just one side adjustment, then we have these scales right here, three T6 screws, likely a couple I say likely. It's possible that these screws actually right here hold in the backspacer. In any case, there's going to be quite a bit of hardware one way or another. It's T6 down here. I uh, don't need to check it. I can tell. So not my favorite thing in the world, but as long as you have some quality tools, you should be okay. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. What are we looking at for materials here? We're looking at M390 titanium and then uh, marble carbon fiber. It's actually a really... You know, it's a classic combination of materials, but it's a nice execution of said materials. Um, probably gonna weigh, I'm gonna say four and a half to five ounces. Yeah, 4.6, sorry, shaking the camera all over the place today. 4.69 ounces, which is not crazy, but the ratios on this thing are not perfect. Um, so it depends on how you feel about that. For me, it's a, you know, eight and a half inch knife, 4.6, 4.7 ounce object, right? That is shaped like a smooth rectangle when it's closed. It's not gonna cause too many issues for me, but it might, depending on what you like to carry, what your laws are, and what type of pants you like to wear. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. We, I don't think we have a super thick blade. I think it's actually gonna be quite a bit thinner on the stock than you might have suspected, or that I might have suspected. 
Uh, yeah, it's coming in. It's saying 106, probably 115 thousandths, um, which is nice. It doesn't need to be super thick. I mean, it's, sometimes it's fun, right? But um, yeah, it doesn't need to be. So uh, I think we can go ahead and move into the um, main part of the review here. This is a good looking knife. I am a huge fan of textured titanium. We have this bolster look right here with kind of these wavy uh, lines on the titanium and then it's, it's a little bit darkened. It looks really good and the transition to the carbon fiber here is also good. The carbon fiber is also definitely a high quality carbon fiber and it looks nice. It's a bit subdued. I don't like carbon fiber that's ultra shiny, right? Here's something, the ergonomics on this thing are freaking fantastic. And that's thanks to a few things, some nice chamfered edges, a good classic knife handle design, right? This kind of, it looks like a steak knife kind of, but you know, there's a reason that this is, you see this, these lines all the time. It's because they work, right? We don't have anything in the, we don't have a flipper tab in the way. This area right here is not super aggressive. So you can make use of this twill right here, um, which really doesn't take up because it's in the handle it doesn't take up much of the cutting edge. This is very, very comfortable. And that pocket clip, which is 3D milled titanium, by the way, um, is wide and flat and nicely uh, knocked down there. This is super, whether you're choked back here like this, which I can still get a full four finger grip on, or you're choked up, this is real nice. I wish they would have extended the jimping out to here, but they didn't, it's no big deal, right? Lock bar disengagement is real easy thanks to this right here where we've got the um, the front cut lower than this side and then they've textured it. They've also nicely knocked down. There's nothing sharp. Nothing in this knife is sharp except for the cutting edge, which is exactly how it should be. This is beautiful in the hand. It's really, really nice. I am very pleased with this and I like the little, they didn't have to, right? the blue and then the gold. Personally, I think I would have liked if they just didn't do that, if they just left it all like kind of grayscale monochrome and done a simple pivot, but it does add a splash of color in an otherwise gray monochrome knife. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it just depends on how you look at it. Um, the blade is a classic drop point blade with a big swedge in it. Um, it's the only thing that I don't like about it is the finish. And this has that kind of those of you who own these knives, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. It's got kind of that MBK satin, uh, satin, satin finish. Um, and by that, I mean, it's like it was on the belt so long that it started to turn a little bit bronze. Um, don't like that. Uh, this is a perfect example of, it's like, just tumble it, right? As far as I can tell, a lot of times companies will charge more money for a satin finish than they will for a tumbled finish. And in my opinion, the tumbled finish looks better initially, and it also looks better over time. Um, so I think maybe just it would have looked better to tumble it. If we're gonna do a machine belt satin finish, uh, we gotta, you know, whoever this is, cause it, a lot of it looks the same, right? I'm not saying that it's the same people doing MBK stuff, but maybe, but this, you know, what happens here is that it kind of looks, it's a little bit uneven, and it starts to look a little bit bronzy. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I, that's usually belt burn, but I don't know, maybe not. Um, so it's, you know, whatever. The blade itself is good though. I mean, like there's no, like the lines are all in the right place and it doesn't start to get, you know, kind of unnecessarily sharp up here until right there, which is no big deal. Um, we have a flat that carries out, eh, I don't know, maybe 70% the length of the blade. Um, the, uh, initial, I'm sorry, the final cutting edge is even, uh, it gets a little bit thinner up here, but not that big of a deal. Looks perfectly even on this side. Uh, like I said, all the lines, everything like that, everything looks good. They do have this little hole right here that you can use for a reverse flick. You got to dig at it a little bit. You'll miss it sometimes just like I did right there and I'm doing repeatedly. So it's not the, <laughs> now all of a sudden I just cannot get it. What is happening? Uh, so this does not work perfectly. And the only other option for deployment is a front flipper, which like all things you will adapt to. Remember, before we call the front flipper a needless fidgety blah, 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 there was a time where thumb studs and flipper tabs were the needless fidgety blah, 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 right? Any knife that could be opened with one hand uh, was, any knife that could be opened with one hand was considered a fancy knife, right? Unless you were, you know, 
like folks with the open L opening at the speed of smell, right? Anything beyond that was considered fancy at some point. So it's just gonna be one of those things. Now we have knives that operate with magnets, right? So a front flipper, um, while it's not my favorite means of deployment, you will adapt to it. This one's okay, it's not the best front flipper. This would have done so much better with either a flipper tab, which would have made this area a little bit more problematic because that's part of why it's so easy to choke up there because you're not, this finger's not working around a flipper tab. Or better yet, thumb studs, which admittedly would be hard to work into this design the way that it is. Some of the lines would have had to change because you can see here, the only place where they could have put thumb studs maybe is right here and they would it would need to clear that bump and then once it's locked out actually maybe it would have worked i mean it's a, it's slightly in the cutting path but i think yeah i think uh maybe this area right here carved a little bit a little bit more out so we could get a nice wide volcano style thumb stud in there and uh then you'd have you know we wouldn't have to mess around with any of this it would be perfect um so yeah really complaints of the blade um, it's plain sharp, and by the way, it does come down to a reasonable, it's not super thin, it's actually a bit thicker behind the edge than you might expect, right? The taper just wasn't super duper aggressive from the flat, um, but it does come down to a nice thin edge. It will slice, it will poke, right? It'll do your EDC stuff, it'll open your Amazon packages, which are likely containing more knives, right? It will do that stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't like the finish, uh, and I, it really needs thumb studs, like this, very specifically needs thumb studs. Uh, moving on here, the backspacer looks nice, very simple, right? Doesn't need to be anything crazier than that. There's no lanyard thing, so sorry, lanyard people. This carries about medium. It's not deep and it's not shallow. It's fine, That's there's doesn't need to be anything else. There is no left-handed option. It's a right-hand only uh, pocket clip mount, so sorry, lefties. We do have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop and also, you know, the overlay or the scale or whatever you want to call that. Um, and this is nice because one of the other problems with, whoops, frame lock, um, you know, front flippers is that you really have to pay attention where these fingers are on the other side because you don't want to be putting tension, extra tension on that lock bar. It'll just make it that much more likely that you will throw it, which is what I just did. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's better like that. Uh, front flippers especially, I do not like exposed frame locks on. You know, I, and and it's like I said in many reviews, I'm not really that, all that big of a fan anymore of exposed frame locks in general. I would rather they be covered by something. Um, I think it's I think it's better that way. Uh, the stop pin, I believe, no, it's actually right there. Um, there's just an insane amount of shouldering on both ends. It goes really deep in underneath the uh, tang of the blade. No blade play. Uh, up, down, left, or right, no um, lock stick. There's no pivot lash. And we have a nice medium strength uh, detent and perfect centering. Um, so uh, the execution of this knife outside of the finish on the blade is really, really good. And this is the second time that I have seen a, what you know, kind of a WTF impressive design from Migron, even though this is AM, it says AM8, right? It's listed as Migron. So I have to assume it's the same company making it. Um, the one I'm talking about is the Valona, which was one of the most impressive knives as far as execution to cost ratio goes. The Valona for $45 was unbelievable. Now this is a lot more money because we're looking at um, you know, more machine time with materials like titanium, carbon fiber, and M390, right? Uh, the price on this thing, it, when it is available, is $185. Um, that's really impressive. I, I want, I really want this thing to have thumb studs and it's kind of, it will operate, right? Once you figure out kind of the right way to get it to front flip, it'll be, it'll work just fine. And then the ergonomics, man, it's just incredible. Uh, assuming that the heat treat is done correctly, this is a great, great user knife. It's it's running on bearings, right? So if you're going to work in a dirty, dusty environment, it might not be the best thing in the world. But um, this is really great. The cost is 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 great. Uh, the fit and finish is excellent. Execution of everything except for that blade finish is really good. I just wish it had thumb studs. Um, 
I'm not going to tell everybody to try and race out and try and find these, you know, or that I, I recommend that you do because, you know, it's, this is, a, this is real close. I'm getting a lot more picky about what goes on my recommended knives playlist, but it's like I said in the unboxing, this company has my attention because they, and not all of their designs speak to me. I went and looked and they got some goofballs in there, right? They're not making like all, it's not like there's one specific design language, um, but the company has my attention. They are clearly capable of making some excellent stuff. And like the Valona, there were just a couple of little elements that made it not perfect. Um, but they're close. And I have a feeling that my Guron is going to drop an absolute banger <laughs> of a knife at some point. And it's going to have so, it's going to be spectacular. I just, I can feel it. Like they just, they just keep barely missing with little things there. Um, and these are made in China, by the way. I should have said that at the beginning. Uh, they're definitely made in China, and this is definitely a company that is not, you know, this isn't Best Deck, this isn't Riot, this isn't We, it's not one of the spotlight makers, right? Um, but they're clearly capable. At the point where I think they stand out a bit more than the other hundreds of companies that are similar, right? So, this is pretty cool. If you like this and you can find it for 185 bucks, I'd say it's well worth it. I think that's a great price. They're just kind of scarce, at least at the time of this upload. And uh, I just, this freaking belt burn satin finish that we see on way too many Chinese and sometimes American made knives. And, and uh, honestly, it's, it, we've, I've seen it from everybody all over the world, right? Uh, Taiwan, Italy, right? Germany, I've seen it before. It's just that doesn't look good. And if you're burning the finish, you might be changing the heat treat, especially, you know, where it, like down near the edge. That's might be messing that up. Um, so I think uh, that's something we need to kind of watch out for. But this is pretty good. Pretty impressive. Not going to put it on my most recommended knives playlist for just a couple of reasons that I mentioned. But this is very, very good. And I've got my eye on um, my Guron for sure. If anybody else, if you guys have more knives from this company or there's something you think that I might like, I am interested in checking out more things from this company. Um, they're not easy to get a hold of. But uh, that's going to be pretty much it uh, for me from today, <laughs> from me for today. Uh, thanks again to the gentleman who sent this in for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.